Welcome back, everyone. You reach the end of the game to find an intriguing convergence of outrageous personalities. You're just dying to see what these heavyweights of bad attitude have to say to each other, but somehow you discover within yourself the superhuman resistance to pause the game. Superhuman restraint to hit pause. There's a whole world of fucking around going on with the Meteor crew during the second year of their voyage, and it would just be, uh, be a criminal act of negligence to end this intermission without at least having a peek at their tomfoolery. To end this intermission without at least having a... Damn it. A weaker person would just want to see what happens with Mina and Vriska right away. Thank goodness you're a player with a strong sense of responsibility and discipline. Psh, psh, boom, boom, psh, psh, boom, boom, psh, yeah. Uh, uh-huh. No, wait, more like, uh... Psh, psh, tch, boom, boom, tch, boom, psh, tch, tch, boom, psh, psh. Yeah, that's right. We're dropping it. Let's do this. We're, like, in the process right now. Dropping it like a Thanksgiving turkey. Dripped over something and shit just got away from me. My butterballs in free fall, motherfuckers. Look out, be goddamn low. What the fuck? Pachoo! Penis sunset. Swole. Yeah, yeah. Dropping everything today. Making it rain. Precipitation straight up mayhem. Hails of weather patterns closing in. Inanimate should be slipping from my mitts. My digits can't commit to a legitimate grip. Wait, now nah, I'ma start over. Feel this flow out a little more. About how I'm dropping things today? Just left and right. Things of all shapes and sizes, and dubious metaphorical merit. Things ain't even being held by chumps who can't be asked to show up. Dropping shit on your behalf. You name it. I'ma let it go. Drop it like a frivolous lawsuit. Oh snap. Get out of my courtroom, bitch. Waste of taxpayer money, yo. Drop it like the most expensive fucking Christmas ornament. Step on that glass with your bare ass feet. Christmas is ruined, motherfucker. Drop it like the mug and cat and usual suspects. Kobayashi with your cup, you dumb fuck. Helameo. Drop it like unemployment figures under the Obama administration's bold economic policies. Drop it like cargo on a space getaway. Just jettison that motherfucker. This rap's blasting off. Drop it like a bunch of firewood I just gathered. Gonna rub a couple motherfucking sticks together. Just sitting here, whipping up sick lyrical friction. If you start smelling smoke, you caught a whiff of my diction. Shit's getting warm, but I won't stop till it's hot. Warm, just don't cut it when shit gets, it, shit's getting dropped. Tell me how you feel about shit getting dropped. How hot do you want it when I let go of the fire? Just say when. What? I can't hear you. I said say what? when, motherfuck. Shit's burning my hands. F it, here we go. Just drop that shit like a bad phone connection. I put gravity in charge of its downward direction. Unfettered descends what it considers perfection. Shit thinks, of sick shit thinks of the ground and it gets an erection. Best hope it's carpet bound in its downward spiral. Cause linoleum is frowned on, met with an eye roll. Landing on grass is just the course it's par for. But hardwood fucking floor is what its wood gets hard for. Guess I should mention, instead of, instead of motherfucking hard-ons, how my motherfucking French could use a presidential pardon. Kick it, Barack! Here's where Barack's rap solo comes in. No, but how dope would that be? No, oh, fuck me, that would all. Damn it, Rose, don't drink so loud. It's messing up my raps. I can actually hear your sips through my headphones. Yeah, well, I can hear your rasps through your whispers. Whispers. Whipsers. Oh my god, how are you so fucking hammered? How strong do you even make that stuff? It's pretty strong, I guess. Whoops. Guess. Guess. <laughs> pretty strong. Rose, you just bootleg some fucking rubbing alcohol. Psh, overreact much? I'm, I'm completely in command of my faculties. Faculty isn't a word. Checkmate. This kind of strikes me as sort of a misappropriation of alchemy. Like, fucking with the mystical technology of creation to whip up some moonshine just seems... I don't know, man. Tell me you at least alchemized a bathtub first to stir that shit in. At least that'd be hilarious. I... Oh my god, you're right. I missed a golden opportunity for particularly humorous approach to this endeavor. And where the fuck is my apple juice, Rose? Gotta say, you really let me down on the AJ front. I tried. I tried making it. It was hard, Dave. <laughs> Bullshit, it was hard. What's so hard about apple juice? It's like the most basic goddamn juice. Like the square one of juice. Yes, that's the point. Apples are startlingly difficult to reproduce. We take for granted our ability to take idealized incenses of even quite complicated objects and construct them from the void. 
but complexity implies a heavily recompensative nature. So, so many things are synesthized from a series of much simpler ideas. To those entities capable of conceptualization and abstraction, an apple is as close to being a non shushionally irreducible object as it gets. Ahem. Notionally. Irreducible. Tell me, Hotshot, how ideas would you combine to make an apple? Uh, exactly. This is why apples are such indivisible symbols when it comes to the field of ideas and their reductionistic, reductionistic essence from the perspective of humans in particular. Both from a standpoint of cultural and mythological significance and from a practical practical one as well if you happen to find yourself actually trying to engineer one why do you think why do you think adam and eve were punished for biting into one they attempted to penetrate an indivisible unit of fundamental knowledge to consume the interior of a thought which cannot be reduced any further this knowledge was forbidden so humanity was forever banished to live in sin and has strive ever since to redeem itself from the hubris of intellectual foily. <laughs> foily. Folly. Or what about the tale of Isaac Newton under the tree? He was bonked on the head by an apple. Not really an apple, though. An atomic idea. An elemental unit of inspiration itself. I'd clock him right on the noggin. And this individual notion colliding with his awareness, much like a high-speed particle, Fired to create a nuclear chain reaction, jarred from the void a more profound understand. Ing of the intrinsic nature of nothingness, that is, gravitation. Of course, the stories are actually bullshit. They didn't happen in reality, but the fact that they are rarely bullshit makes them more interesting. Men have crafted many stories that are bullshit out of symbols risen from the abyss of consciousness without necessar necessarily knowing what the fuck they were doing or saying as they floundered around some truth. But in spite of themselves, they would for however briefly close through a ray of light regard regardless because of the symbols, Dave. The symbols held the power. Well, shit, looks like I wandered into a really weird, uncharted side of town tonight. It's called the Drunk Rose District, and I'm scared out of my fucking mind. For a guy who's supposedly, and I quote, so cool, you really are almost comically uptight. Here, why don't you have some? No. What a prune. Prune. Hey. I told you, I don't want any of your experimental fucking space wizard booze. I'd rather not go blind. And then Terezi will have to teach me to lick shit to see. Is that what you want to do? Want me licking everything in sight? Like, oh hey, mayor, slurp. Oh fuck, you're not the mayor anymore. You're my goddamn sister. <laughs> oh my god, that you laughed way too hard at that. It wasn't clearly anywhere close to that funny. I think you've had enough. <laughs> what? Good lord. I still don't know why you're so bent on making this liquor. I thought you weren't really that down with drinking. You never liked it when your mom drank. What happened to that? Meh. She was a lonely single mom. I forgave her. Okay, so why? Why tonight did you just decide to get completely wasted before you, like, are you nervous about the date with Kanaya? Is that it? It's a date? Uh, yes. How do you figure it's a date? Rose, you're wearing a friggin' prom dress and nervously drinking your ass off while you're waiting for Kanaya to arrive for a goddamn date. Can't a girl just look her best once in a while? This is infuriating. Why do you even bother with this stupid charade? You could at least... You could be at, like, a drive-in movie making out with each other, all exchanging class rings while giving birth to each other's other fucking children, and you would still be all coy, like, is it a date or isn't it? Hmm, who can really say for sure? Okay, maybe I took a little sip to take the edge off. Yeah, that turned out to be one hell of a sip. Maybe you should just reschedule. No! No! Just sleep it off. There are more hot dates where that came from. It's cool! I'm... Cool, really. I'm just not sure you're gonna make the best impression like this. Come on, let's find you a suitably soft pile of objects to sleep in before she. Ah, oh, shit. Hmm? She's here. <gasps> Good evening. Hey. 
Oh my fucking god, I can't even deal. Oh, hmm. What is this? Uh, am I underdressed for the occasion? No, you look so great. If I'd known you wanted to dress in more elegant attire, I would have happily, um, hmm. Well, if you think I look fine, then like this, then okay. Rose, I think you started drinking way too early. I think you just like completely fucking forgot to tell Kanaya you were dressing up. Yeah, <laughs> wow. You're probably right. I started so... So when I start, whatever time is it. Man, you're going to make her so uncomfortable all dolled up like that. Not to mention three sheets of the fucking wind. This date's going to be so awkward. It's not a date! Yeah, sure. Rose, are you feeling alright? Why do you ask? Because if you want to know, I really felt quite fabulous. Ah. It seems you may have imbibed one of your experimental human soporifics. <laughs> Whoa, yes, well then, I guess that would explain it. Explain what? The lethargy you possibly experienced when it came to completing our rendezvous in a timely manner. Our... wait? What? I was waiting for you in the common area for a couple hours, but you did not show up. So I came to find you. Shaking my head. Oh, oh, oh my god! I FORGOT ABOUT OUR DATE! Our date. Then you did intend for the plans we made to be a date. Which is to say, one that was romantically oriented. Holy shit, we got a room full of smooth operators here tonight. Yes, Kanaya, it was going to be a romantically oriented date. I'm so sorry. But as you can see, Rose is hooched to the fucking max. So, I think you're better off going out another time. No! I said I was still up for it. I already fucked up by lashing track of time. I'm not gonna blow it again. Ugh, you seriously still want to go through with this? Well, I'm still amenable to an evening of whatever. But is there some reason why you would advise otherwise, Dave? I will have to plead ignorance on the subject of human courtship and its customs when it involves one or more intoxicated parties. Is there a problem? A problem? I don't know. If you're cool with your date slurring words and making no damn sense about apples, then I guess not. Why are you both looking at me? Stop that. Wink. No, don't. Hey, I'm not your fucking life coach here. If you want to go on a drunk date, what do I care? Man, what do I even know about the human courtship anyway? Not like I ever dated a fucking human, so I guess have at it. Alright. Awesome. Date night with drunkie it is. Go ape shit, I guess. Uh, so what should I do here? You want me to pack up my wraps and leave you alone, or- Oh no, you don't have to do that. We can leave you to your slam poems in peace. Kayaya, why don't we go for a walk? Yes, after you, if you can actually manage to- Whoa there! Maintain your balance. Okay, are you good? Okay, good, let's go. Since it's now clear that your premeditated designs on this evening exceeded my own by a wide margin, insofar as you intended this to be a date with fancy clothes, whereas I showed up looking like something the Lucas dragged in, maybe you can tell me now exactly what you had in mind. I mean, as far as specific activities are concerned. Nope. Nope? I mean, nope? Nope what? I honestly had not drafted blueprints for the evening, assigned from getting prettied up and... Actually, you know, being punctual about my commitment. Whoops. It's really okay, though. I admit, I was irked for a moment, but then realized it was so unlike you that extenuating circumstances were most likely in play. So I went to find you, and lo and behold, extenuation was what I found to be taking place. OMG, I am so extenuated right now. <laughs> Honk. What? Did you hear something? No. Hear what? Hum. Maybe you should to turn the lights on. That better. That better? Yes! Shh. What are we listening for? Uh, nothing, I guess. Anyway, I just thought that tonight we could just walk around for a while and talk about really anything. Like our worlds, or the future, or how you're going to save your species. Yes, that sounds nice. Just to have a casual, spontaneous evening. I don't, I don't see why is the date have to always be a filter of fucking issue. Don't you agree, Honk? 
Kanaya. Can you keep a secret? Yes. I learned something earlier today. It was troubling. Something about Teresi and... And what? And Gamshi. <laughs> See, I bumped into him earlier. You did? Where? No, no, please, please, don't get angry. And go on another vengeful clown hunting expedition. I, this is the point. This is, I was troubling me about this. I don't want anyone to fight. Actually, there's no need to worry about that. I think I'm done trying to kill him. You are? Yeah, he's achieved victory through the gambit of coward's default. Don't get me wrong, he's still utterly awful, but sometimes you just have to let a thing go, you know. Yeah. But what were you saying about what were you saying about Terezi and Gamzi? Right, well, apparently they are an item? Blackways, I mean. What? You, you know spades dating in the shadows? Nobody knows but me and now you. Are you serious? Yes. It's been troubling me. The more I think about it a lot. Why? Because it presents a prickly political situation. Terezi's relationship with Carcant is already somewhat tenuous with their, well, from what I've gathered about their history. And Dave, his involvement makes it all even more complicated. And I think with Carcat being Moirails to Gamzi, if he finds out Gamzi is spades with Tetrizi, then, correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this whole arrangement getting into a territory of social taboo? Tabab. Excuse me. This could be very awkward. Yes. Right. I don't know if it's my seer powers or what, but I can see it's unfolding all too clearly. Carcast finds out about it and flies in ORH. It ruins his more real... real I mean his more... <laughs> it ruins his diamonds with Gamzee, who therefore becomes less stable. And he vilifies Terezi as well. Who knows how she reacts, or what happens with Dave for that matter. Would Dave actually be alright with Terezi dating a psychotic clown on the side, even if it's a relationship centered around only enmity? I kind of doubt it. He could side with the Corcat on the matter, not even to speak of where your alignment is on the subject of Gamzine, which is what I fear. I'm afraid that this could create a schism in our group, that we could all be torn apart, and I don't want that. I want us all to stay friends and just be peaceful together. Me too. I can see the dilemma here. Are you actually thinking about, um, doing something about this? I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't interfere with this Christmas this shit. Christmas the oh, fuck. They hate dating. Maybe it's just a wonderful thing for them, and I would be horrible to interfere with their beautiful, beautiful hate. The problem is. It's still so alien to me. The idea of black romance. I try to understand sometimes like more than intellectually. I try to put myself in the shoes of feeling that and I still doesn't make any sense to me. I don't want to project my human values onto an alien relationship I disapprove of. I understand, but what you're describing in... Actually, I'm hesitant to even mention it. No, what? This is probably not a good idea. Oh, please, you know you have to tell me. The feelings you're having are actually perfectly normal within the framework of our quadrant-based romantic traditions. I don't know if they can be felt naturally by humans, but the way you're viewing their relationship would be quite a standard response on Dalternia. Yeah? Yes. It is sanctioned within the Ashen Quadrant, which addresses conciliatory romantic feelings not directed at a single person, but at two people who are presently in such a contentious relationship. Oh, shush, I forgot about that. You're right. It is generally not regarded as one of the more emotionally fulfilling quadrants to become involved in, and can be quite laborious to maintain, but it served a very important social purpose for my people, such as in situations very similar to the one you described, where two parties are highly drawn to each other through animosity. They may in fact be perfect for each other in that tumultuous quadrant, but to pursue the relationship would be chaos. Much like the scenario you laid out, the two Kismases, if left unchecked, would devastate all their other relationships, those in their own quadrants, and even those in other people's. So it is the job of Auspistus to make sure that that doesn't happen. Yes. Heck. Yes! Can I? That is exactly what I need to do! Oh no, really? Absolutely. 
I have never been so sure about anything. Well, maybe almost anything. But yes, I don't think I would advise it. It's extremely difficult and can often feel like a thankless undertaking. In truth, it's probably the most challenging quadrant to master. Trust me. I believe you. But I want to know, can you teach me? I... There's so much I just don't understand about your romance, but I'm so curious. I try to understand the concept of either contentious or platonic relationships as something that can be parsed through the emotions associated with romance, but it still doesn't really compute to me. I really don't know if I would be a good teacher of auspicism. I honestly was not very good at it myself. That's fine. Forget auspicious, auspicious, auspicious. Goddamn. Forget specifically that right now. I want you to teach me everything. Everything? Yes. That is a lot of things. I want you to teach me all the quadrants. I want you to tell me about your spabes, your didamans, and I want you to share with me your clums. And your hearst. I want you smooch happen. Drunk happen. Rose combo bob. Honk. Bonk. Bonk. Vent shaft. Weird honk. And with the smitten seer's inebriated descent down a flight of escalation zigzags through the dark subway-like belly of the meteor, and with teen Xeno love mingling with weird honks wafting from the vent shafts to fill the fetid laboratory air with equal parts mirth and gaiety, we are ready to bid adieu to this vignette of hyper-important fucking around on the pitch-perfect note of a single textbook deployment of the rare yet highly embarrassing Drunk Happened Rose Combo Bob. And once again, we find ourselves poised to attempt to exit this intermission prematurely, while forgetting to address exactly no loose ends whatsoever. You turn the page to find a pair of green curtains that won't close, and are fooled completely by them, as usual. And there you have it. Literally the worst psych out in Homestuck to date, hands down. But seriously, we still need to see what Mina and Vriska have to say to each other. Proceed to the next page to find out how these twin titans of in-your-face delinquency react to each other's unique brands of reckless, anti-hero chutzpah. Spoiler warning! Do not open dialogue log until fully loaded. Killed by the Brake Spider by Toby Strife. I'm sorry, Toby Fox. Toby Strife. <laughs> Wouldn't be my worst case of recombination. I feel like this is fucking with me. You spend no less than 90 seconds... Staring at this fucking GIF image before you realize the actual flash animation is on the next page. Ha! Hey, you circuit looking girl. Wanna join my army? Oh, I see. It's the Pikesies wannabe, so you're the one raising the army. That's hilarious. Sorry, I can't join your dumb army. I'm busy pursuing a much more intelligent strategy. Who the fuck you calling a wannabe? Lousy pants wearing smart mouth and raining a ripoff? Now get in my army before I poke you up, biatch. Not gonna happen. I am, however, looking for a large number of recruits to follow me on my treasure hunting expedition. What? I need an enormous mob of ghosts following me around to get that asshole's attention, so you can wreck more empty space and help me find the treasure. You want in? That makes no fucking sense at all. 
And in any way, I don't recall any giving anyone clearance for a whale normish treasure hunt. As the rightful heiress, that sort of noise has to go through me, yo. <laughs> wow, I had no idea that Pikesy's twin was such a riot. At least, I hope you were trying to be funny with that remark. John Tavros, stop goofing off over there and come get a load of this chick. Uh, what am I actually getting a load of? Oh, it's you. It's you. I remember you. It's Blue Boy. <laughs> I forgot all about this dumb nerd. Hey, what are you doing with that? No, please, put the pokey thing down. Hey, Blue Boy, catch! Ah, uh, not again! Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, no, you did not just fork vanish my alt universe ex boyfriend. No, you didn't. Guess you could say I made him disappear. <laughs> Who do you think you are? Some sort of bad girl? Please, that's obviously my turf. But you clearly want to rumble, so who am I to deny you the beatdown you're angling for? Angling? Hey, stick to your spider puns or whatever if you're gonna talk smack. Fish puns are my turf. Or I guess my surf? Yeah, uh, I don't really do puns, mainly because I'm not a lame wiggler. Anyway, you sure look like you, you sure look like to you sh you sure like to wave that trident around while running your mouth. I wonder if you had any intention of engaging in any actual combat. Guess it's up to me to get this party started. As usual, watch and learn. Aw oh, man, is that what we're doing now? Chained into our bullshit god rags. Your move, punk. But these jams are so ugly. Fine, here goes nothing. Ugh, I look like hell, all beige and shit. How can you even stand these grody ass thief duds? Wow, unreal, what a prima donna. Tavros, can you believe this girl? What are you doing? Stop fidgeting around, are you looking for something? Must find my precious. I was thinking of modding my PJs to look a little snazzier. What do you think of this? Uh, or this maybe? How about, wait, how about, uh, yeah. Uh, oh my god, will you stop? You don't like your gear. Just do what I do. Take it to the next level. Check this out. Ancestrally awakened. The fuck? Come on, girl. I ain't got no dice or fancy pirate threads. This is like my top shelf battle mode here. But I can't call for backup. My homies can teach you to show your royalty a little respect. Hey, what's going on here? Mina, are you fighting with my ancestor? This is so counterproductive. Original recipe circuit. Quit your gloving and go god tier already. There's a rumble going down in the hood. Okay, fine, but I'm not participating in this fight. Hey there, dorky teen Marquis. Nice of you to join us. Your friend seems to think she's the only one who can call for backup, as if I don't have god tier pals waiting in the wings too. Huh? What's happening here? Wait, this is a party? Oh goodness, I think it is. This is like a fun costume party for ghosts, isn't it? What's the occasion? Nothing, Megiddo. I'm sorry. Nothing, Megiddo. Just a run-of-the-mill smackdown. Oh, but... I'm not doing any fighting. Neither am I. God damn it, Aradia. Scrot damn clam it, Arania. Alright, we need some non-pacifist chumps on this scene pronto. Hey, any one of the ghosts of Sandy, get your tail over here. It's going down. Yeah. Yeah, girls! Heard you were starting a party over here! No, it's not a party, it's... Hmm, I see someone has chosen to dress as a pirate for this party, in spite of negative associations that, that the old class marauding classes have been vigilant abuse, oppression not even to mention. Yo, poor him! Nice costume! We're changing to something on such short notice! High five! Ah, dude, get the fuck out! So we have and Solix. Uh, might be original Solix? Two Aradia bots and an Equius. A Durst Equius. What? No, this isn't a costume. It's just what I was wearing. I came over here to see what all the commotion was about. Damn, girl, you just looking fine for the hell of it then? Girl power! Uh, sure. So this is a party? Sounds like fun. No, it's not a party. God fucking damn it. Let's annihilate them. Yes, let's. I'm in the mood to ruin somebody. Right on, I knew I could count on you crazy metal broads for some mayhem. Hey, Aradia, uh, your robo clones look like they're about to flip the fuck out. You're making me nervous. <laughs> Can you try talking some sense into them? 
Sorry, Sarlux. My robot duplicates have always been free agents, totally exempt from my influence and better judgment. Aquis, do you think you can calm them down? They are persnickety devices. Often sweat seeps into their circuitry and causes them to behave more erratically, which unfortunately only causes me to sweat even more profusely, I'm afraid. Equis, you've never talked about it, but I'm not sure how comfortable I am with you, um, porting such a plur great plurality of my mechanical doubles. On a scale of 1 to 100, how depraved would you say you find my behavior? Please be 100, please be 100. I should never have kissed you that time, it was such a mistake. I need a towel! A new one, I mean! Has anyone seen my Hamlet? Oh! Hey, nice costume, buddy! Honk, honk. Be quiet, by saying anything, you're really making a horrible impression on people we should be trying to impress here. I'm oh, sorry. I'll forgive you, but this is the last time I ever do. I'm at, I'm at my wit's end with you. I'm oh, sorry, please, please forgive me again. Glub? Whoops, I mean, Glub. Oh gosh, it's my ancestor. I'm so nervous. I can't let her notice me. She's so unbelievable, cool, tsunami. Aw, oh, snap, it's my ancestor. Wish I didn't notice her. Must suppress urge to murder her for royal supremacy. Whoa, man. Could you stop bumping me with your codpiece? Sorry, chief. Honest mistake. So, uh, are you doing anything later? Wait, are you actually seriously hitting on me? Whoa, dude, even I think you. Whoa, dude, even. Sorry. Whoa, man, could you maybe stop bumping me with your cod piece? Sorry, Chief, honest mistake, so are you doing anything later? Wait, are you actually seriously hitting on me? Wow, dude, even I think you're trash. I'm cool enough, cat, if you get to know me. You didn't answer the question. Fine, let's go on a date, I guess. Flipping amazing, this tragic scenario is what I've been reduced to. Hey, everyone, stay on the right goddamn sides. Cronus, I'm looking at you. Yeah, Nepeta, back in line. You people need to start taking this brawl more seriously. Yo, yo, my gangsta. I hear that you were going off to fight some ghost-killing demon? Mind if I tag along? I've been hoping for a chance to put an end to my cool joke of an existence. Ha! <laughs> Bangarang. Oh, God. Hell yes, on this team I have a major need for expendable pip- Oh, it's Bunny Rufio! Don't be such a downer. Did you get the meow -mo? This is not a cat fight. It's a costume party. No, no. It really is a cat fight. Or, I mean, a regular fight. Ugh. Eulen, it'd be great if you didn't use such use this party as a platform to engage in suicide shaming. I think Rufio is triggered enough for, as it is to have to live with the heinous body of a metal horse. Demar speak Japanese. Are you fuckers deaf? This isn't a party. Horus, your outfit looks nice, but sorry to say it was a false alarm. It's not a costume party. This isn't a costume. I'm literally a majestic stallion, and my appearance reflects this noble reality. Ah, gotcha. Hey guys, can I be on the other team? Yes. No. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hey, re real Gamzee is there. This gathering has completely blown away my ability to tolerate stupidity and awfulness. Get me the fuck out of here! God damn it, the crowd's getting too thick. I can't even get away from this shit. Everybody fucking move! Excuse me, other people who are me and otherwise. Honk. Have you seen a beautiful treasure on the floor that's more specifically like a little ring? Uh, Carcat, shut up. This is great. We need to get more people jammed into this sweet fight party masquerade. Oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, motherfucker! I saw the crowd from way over there. According to people on, on the cusp, this is some sort of costume party? Two facts, girl! Just jam yourself in the pile like this! Ah, oh, fuck, are people way over there still calling this a party? Destroy. Someone's touching me! This needs to stop! Someone who's triggering me. This needs to be tagged. Shoosh. I'm sorry. Oh god, I can hear him whining from all the way over there. Someone over there is probably making the same observation about you. Yeah, and your ancestor is probably chiding him maternally over there. Just like you are with me. Ever think about that? I'm sorry. Kill. Where? Oh, where? <laughs> this party is a fucking joke. 
Nah, it's a shitty battle royale. Pass it on your dirt scrape and sack of honey Dijon rubbish. Nice dress, thin face. Lol. It's my precious. Tavro, stop crawling under everyone's feet. You're being so weird. Yeah, can we all hear you whispering to yourself? Pretty weird, bro. None of them can understand. Destroy. Oh, my dear sweet god. Ha, uh, yo, yeah, oh, I think I can hear my young ancestor whispering all the way from over here. About something precious? Shit's crazy. The beauty. My precious. It reminds me of when I was similarly smitten and searching everywhere for the perfect snout ring for you to fortify our commitment. Do you remember Rufio? Oh yeah, those were the days. Hey, doll, mind if we talk a bit? I mainly want to look wanna look distracted, so the guy with the ponytail leaves me alone. You dig? Death to all the Ah damn, so much like the real thing, it's freaky. Like what real thing? Uh, you know, like if you say you like a live variety, I will make you beg for a horse body. No, no, like someone else. Damn, uncanny. Oh, okay. Hey, you're pretty cool, babe. Wanna like, you're not doing anything. Excuse me, what is going on over here? Man, not another's a hack. It's fucking crazy. This guy with the mohawk was flirting with me and I was being fully receptive to his advances. Whoa, you were? I see. A radio bot 100502. Why must you devastate my pump biscuit so? The pounceless astutely observes the exchange and updates her shipping grid with startling developments of the heart. Nepeta, stop. No! Yes. No! Yes. No! Honk! More! More, I say! <laughs> I found it! The ring! Wow, that whisper was loud. I think even I heard it. No, wait, this isn't it. Hey there, sport. I think that's my ring you have. I think that's my... I think that's my ring you have there. I've been looking all over for it. Oh, okay, here you go. Thank you, friend. Thank you so very, very much. Wow. Oh, wow. This hug is lasting way too long. Hey, sketch your ring and If you touch him again, I'll fucking kill you. Owned. I hate the afterlife. I hate the afterlife. I hate the afterlife. Circuit Deuce, is this bar carp as like, aggravant to you as it is to me? At least as much. Probably a lot more. Like, seriously, it's so crowded now our faces are literally touching. That can't be right. I know, it's getting pretty awkward. Let's back these ass ads up and get on with our fight. Agreed. Listen to me, both of you. This duel is incredibly pointless. Surely there's a way for you both to pursue your objectives without conflict. In any case, I don't have time to moderate your ridiculous fight. I have a cherub to find. I couldn't agree more. Making him think we're all looking for the cherub is a very important part of my plan. I guess great minds think alike. No, but I'm really looking for her. All the better. That really helps sell the ruse. It's not a ruse! Classic favor circuits, right though. We are sort of wasting time here. Let's hurry this up and make it simple. If I win, all these dorkwads join my army, including you. If you win, then you get all the spoils and go hunt for the treasure. And if luck should conspire to make it a draw, I don't know, man. Then I guess we combine all our plans into one huge clusterfuck plan? Like this whole thing ain't one big clusterfuck already. I will agree to those terms. This is going to be almost too easy. Circuit the sequel. Shut your cocky mouth and fight me. Stop, you guys! Callie yelled. She yelled and yelled. No one could see her. Perhaps the thieves. Caught up in something, something, something. Next time.